<clears throat> sorry so again uh, welcome everyone so uh, i am radhika from heritage essentials uh, <clears throat> this is our uh, uh, this is part of our uh, cultivating health initiative uh, so heritage essentials uh, is an online organic uh, uh, store uh, where we source organic ingredients naturally grown ingredients directly from the farmers uh, and uh, we uh, you know deliver to our uh, uh, customers so basically to give an intro about heritage uh, essentials i'll have to give a small introduction about our parent company heritage inspired uh, so heritage inspired is into uh, heritage tours experiential heritage tours and uh, we do on the Cholas, Pandyas, Pallava dynasties. And while on these tours, uh, like I said, they're all experiential. We have several uh, villagers who take part in this. Around uh, 30 to 40 villagers take part and they have a, a crucial role to play in our tours. And most of them are farmers. So during our interaction with them over the last five years, uh, we were able to convince them to convert to I organic remember. farming. Yeah. So uh, some of them, uh, you know, uh, converted to, uh, adapted to organic farming, uh, leaving aside uh, pesticides and uh, chemical fertilizers, but they did not know how to sell their produce. Uh, so then we, uh, since we are into travel uh, uh, business, we thought that we would, uh, you know, bring their produce to our travelers. So this is how it all started in 2019. So we brought uh, our farmers uh, organic produce like uh, rice, traditional rice varieties, uh, pulses to our travelers. And that's how it uh, started, uh, you know, way back in 2019. Um, so now we have uh, several, uh, you know, products from farmers directly across uh, the country, uh, like traditional rice varieties, millets, and, um, you know, uh, nuts from Kashmir. So uh, we conduct these cookery sessions uh, once in a while uh, in order to introduce people to these um, native ingredients. Uh, because many of us uh, would want to try them, like millets. We want to incorporate millets into our uh, daily uh, routine, but we may not know how to do it. So in order to help people adapt uh, to these new ingredients, uh, no, they are actually not new, but probably new to us. Uh, they've been there for a very long time. Uh, so we've been conducting these sessions. And uh, this is the first time we are conducting a session on baking. So baking with healthy ingredients, baking with millets. We were, in fact, uh, you know, looking to do this for a long time. And uh, finally, we found, uh, in fact, one of our customers, a long-time customer, Joy, Joy Janish. So she is into... Uh, you know, organic baking. Uh, she runs a bakery store. Sorry, uh, she runs a bakery in uh, Bangalore. And uh, she's been doing this passionately for the last uh, five years. Uh, so baking is something that is of, uh, uh, you know, much interest to many of us. Who doesn't like cakes, right? And uh, if at all, we could get rid of the you know, maida and white sugar and, you know, get uh, really good healthy cakes, uh, who would not want it? So th that's what, you know, Joy has been experimenting over the last uh, five years. And today she's here to share her expertise with us. And uh, she wanted to do a live demo uh, for us. Uh, so Joy is here and uh, her bakery is called Beach Marvel Bakery in Bangalore. So any of you from Bangalore, you may want to visit her. And uh, uh, today she'll be sharing a couple of recipes, uh, uh, banana walnut uh, cake and uh, the other one is ragi cookies. So over to you, Joy. Hi, Radhika. And hi, everyone. Um, thank you for the warm welcome. And I hope everyone would benefit uh, from this session. Uh, I have personally benefited from Heritage Institute. Uh, I've been using their products for quite some time um, for my regular use as well as uh, in the cakes that I bake. Um, uh, one, minute, are... Joy, one minute, Joy. One minute. Is she audible uh, clearly uh, to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, probably, Joy, you could come a little closer. Uh, yeah. No, I have a mic next to me. Oh, all right. Yeah. That's fine, right? Yeah. I mean, Carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we'll be uh, so uh, Radhika will be sharing the recipe as PPT. Uh, so this is how we'll be going. We'll be doing the first uh, demo of uh, the first recipe. And if you have any questions or any queries related to that, ask me by the end of that session. And then we we'll move on to the next one. 
or depending on the time uh, we would uh, do that um so um is i hope everybody would have baked and have some baking knowledge here can i get some answers yes ma'am yes is anyone really new to baking here not baked even once no think we yes, all i have not baked even once it's maha here okay nobody i think this would be a very uh, easy to go on uh, not much of complex ingredients also so um so today uh, we will be using the samba wheat i think you would know heritage essentials has recently launched uh, the samba wheat and it's it, it's called samba wheat in tamil but in english it's also called emma wheat okay so this has uh, different names um, so you would know uh, the benefit of uh, emma wheat is like it's very uh, less in the glycemic index so if at all you are diabetic this is a, a best wheat to try but though it is not like the though the gluten formation is not as good as a regular wheat it would be a bit less when you make rotis and all it would be a bit hard so um today in this cake um, i think you would have seen the picture of the cake uh, that i have shared across so you could see it got a good texture because of the uh, we we used uh, eggs to uh, make it more soft and tender so that's why egg plays a major role here in this recipe so we will need eggs here so i will just show you a uh, go through um, so hope this is visible is this visible for everybody yes ma'am yes yes yeah. okay so this is the wheat uh, i think the uh, radhika can share uh, the recipe so yeah. Um, yeah, I will share the PowerPoint. Uh, the ingredients. Ma'am, sorry to interrupt. The voice is breaking. Not clear. Okay. Um. Let's see, ma'am. Uh, let's see for a few more minutes how it is. Okay. So now I'll uh, show the ingredients. Uh, you you all can take a screenshot of it, uh, or a photo of it, and then I'll uh, close the screenshot so that close the uh, screen share so that you can see the video clearly. okay uh, for a couple of minutes i'll just show the ingredients now mm. is it visible to everyone okay so uh, here you could uh, i'll just go through the ingredients one so you're not uh, a bit scared of anything so if at all you don't get a lucky banana you could use a robusta banana robusta banana the replacement is just one banana if at all you're going with the uh, regular a lucky um the a lucky would be a very small banana right so the standard size if you take it would require four but if you have weighing scale uh, you could measure to 200 grams and then we would need uh, two free range eggs and we would need hung curd so hung curd is nothing but our regular curd you just you know um, drip it in a muslin cloth and uh, hang it overnight or just few hours until all the water is drained out so that's the hung curd and the samba is uh, 2/3 cup and it's also 70 grams if you take the weigh measurements and and also i have uh, i've added one tablespoon of cholam flour it's a white cholam so it is called jowar in uh, it's called jowar in english so um the cholam flour the jowar flour gives us a bit of um, softness to the cake since samba wheat is on the drier side i've uh, used just to balance out i've used one tablespoon of cholam flour and then we have jaggery so if you could see uh, the jaggery is very less we get the sweetness for the cake from the bananas so our jaggery is just two tablespoons that is just 30 grams and then we are not going to use any oil or butter we are just going to use the nut butter and we are using uh, unsweetened peanut Any butter okay so we are using an unsweetened uh, peanut butter uh, that is again two tablespoon and then for the cake rising we need a evening agent that is baking powder and to uh, uh, to give a nice fragrance to the cake we are using cinnamon powder and you could always 
use additionally just on the topping or inside a cake. And you could go with walnuts or chocolate chips. So that's optional up to you. So over to the, we'll just go on with the demo. Yeah. Hope everybody would have taken a screenshot. Yeah. Uh, if you have any doubts, please note it down and uh, you can let me know uh, once the demo is over for this. So this is a quick to put up recipe. Just you need all your ingredients set. And once that is set, you just need to whip it up. You need, uh, need not have any hand blender or a beater or something. Just a normal whisk or a fork is enough. If at all you are uh, uh, new to this. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, you could fill my screen, so I'll be showing uh, the demo. So I have all the ingredients lined up here. So, okay, so the first thing that I will be uh, doing is like, I've taken the bananas here, okay? So I've taken a big bowl. Uh, the bananas are here, I have smashed it uh, well, okay? So to this, I'm going to add eggs. So I'm going to add two eggs. Um, eggless version, please. Uh, may your questions be at the end of the session. Thank you. So I'll be adding two eggs. And I'm going to give a quick miss, uh, whisk. So this is the whisk that I was talking about. This I think everybody would have. If you still don't have this, use a um, fork. Okay. I'm just going to give a quick mix. So you could see it has become very frothy now and it's also very heavy. Okay, so to this I'm going to add um, the peanut butter. So we have like around two tablespoons of peanut butter. And I also have some curd here, okay? So I'll be adding the curd as well. And I will be adding the jaggery. So this is the little uh, tiny bit of jaggery that we'll be adding just for mild sweetness, okay? So I'm going to give a whisk, I'm going to whisk all this together, okay? So that's it. This is the only step that we need to uh, do for this, it's very simple. Okay, so I've just given a quick whip. Okay, and uh, take a slip. Okay, so always cooking your ingredients is very essential in baking. So I'll take the wheat flour. Joy, suddenly your voice is dipping. Is it? Okay, now? Yeah, yeah. Now better, right? Okay. Yeah. So I have added the wheat flour to the soup and also I'm adding the solemn flour, that's the jawa, one tablespoon. And I'm adding the cinnamon powder and the baking powder to this. Okay. So I'm going to give a sip <laughs> so that if at all there's any lumps or I just want to get a very nice flour. So this would help me and also this would aerate my floor since wheat is tend to be pretty dense or hard so that would okay so i've just uh, done that i'll just give it a whisk okay so before doing that i would like to preheat my oven okay so my oven is here, I'm going to bring it to 180. Okay, so if at all you don't have an oven, I don't worry, I'll be giving, I'll be telling what to do at the end, uh, end of this demo. Okay, so now our wet ingredients are ready and our dry is ready. So we are giving a quick whisk to this. Okay. So I'm just going to add the dry to the wet all together. And I'm just going to fold the ingredients. Okay. 
So folding is not mixing vigorously. That's called folding. You fold it very gently, especially whenever you are baking with wheat flour, um, because um, you can fold it very gently to get a soft cake. Okay, so at this point you could add, so you could see, you, you need to fold it until you can no longer see any of your dry flour. Okay, so this is going to be a very thick batter. If you could see, it's not flowing. You could see this is a very thick batter. So this has nicely uh, come together. Okay, I'm using a six inch pan today. I'm using a six inch pan. Okay, I'll just line the pan with a parchment paper and I rub the pan with a little bit of oil so the parchment paper can stick to the pan. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. And you could see there are no more dry ingredients on the bowl. So everything is mixed. It's a bit very, uh, it's a very thick batter and it's not flowy. So you need to uh, keep an eye on the consistency. So that's the consistency you have to aim when you're baking. Yeah, you have to note that down. Okay, so I'm going to add this to the pan. Okay, I could smell the peanut butter, though we have added very little. It's very fragrant. And cinnamon also will give you a very nice flavor uh, to the cake. So you just don't press the cake too much. Just smooth the cake with your spoon or your silicone spatula. Spread it out across. Okay. And on top, I'm going to just uh, top with some walnuts. Okay. So the, these are like some chopped walnuts that I have. So there's no specific measurement. I'm just like going with it. So if you'd like to uh, have some crunchiness inside as well, you can just fold in um, at the end a bit more walnuts or chocolate chips. So, so here is our cake. So once my oven is preheated, I'll be just putting it into my oven. Okay. So yeah, any doubts, you can just shoot me now. Um. <clears throat> Um, I have a question. I just want to know if I don't have yellaki bananas, is there any other banana that I can use? Robusta, you can use, or you can use any bananas. You could use Robusta. Robusta is a, gen a commonly available one. If not, what was the other name? Robusta. Only the Robusta. Long, the long green banana. Uh, in case it gets too thick, can we add milk? Uh, no, no. Uh, you need this consistency. You can't. This is a tea cake. Tea cakes are generally thicker in consistency, so you you should not thin it out. Yeah. Um. Can can I use uh, instead of baking soda? Can I use uh, a different uh, version? No, uh, I like used. Uh, uh, I have used aluminium-free baking powder. I haven't used any soda here. No. Uh, can I use uh, soda culture? Pseudo culture. Um, if you have tried already, you could use. I'm not sure of the term. What is the pseudo culture? So it's a wild yeast. Wild yeast it is. Oh, you are you mean sort of <laughs> the discard. So it just, I'll come to your questions now. Uh, so I just my oven has beeped. So I just put it in the oven. So generally, whenever you're baking in the oven, use it in a center rack. If at all you have the small OPG. Uh, if at all it's a multi level baking, you can put it in any, the, any of your racks, but uh, for this, I'm free. You could uh, use the pan for that. And I'm going to bake it for 30 minutes. Okay, 
So once thirty is done, so ideally it would take uh, thirty to thirty-five minutes. So uh, you could check at uh, thirty minutes and then um, find out like whether it is done or not. You could uh, use uh, you know your toothpick to check, or you can just touch your cake and if it springs back, it would be done. Okay, so yeah, sort of you could obviously use. I didn't get the term earlier uh, to your question, so yeah, you could use sort of. So uh, normally we will uh, we will keep it for a longer time. Here you are baking it. So uh, your sort of when you are using um, your sort of should be at the levine stage. That means it's a highly active stage. You can't use it. Um, I mean, use a discard because you want it to rise right in the oven. So uh, on the levine stage, you could use. Maybe you could uh, leave it. Leave your sort of like activate your sort of the previous day. The active sort of you could. Use. Not the discard. Okay, thank you. Another one uh, instead of yogurt, can you use uh, uh, if there is a milk uh, allergy or something? Can I use? Could, uh, yes, you could use for you could go for vegan milk or vegan curds. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. And bless version for this cake. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, I'm Savitri here. Uh, instead of eggs, what will we use? Okay, so this cake would need eggs. I'm sorry to say something, and Savitri. This would need eggs, but still you could use flax powder as a replacement or hemp powder. Flax or, powder? What is the measurement of flax powder? So uh, for every egg, uh, so you could use, so here I have used two, tape, uh, two eggs, right? So you would need yes. uh, two tablespoons of flax powder. I think Sunny already knew the replacement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two tablespoons, correct? Yes. Two tablespoons. And so double, um, so for uh, triple the amount of water, hot water. Okay. Uh, two tablespoons, six uh, water. Six, table, six tablespoons. Tablespoon right. water. Yes. Thank you. Hi, George. Divya here. Yeah, hi. Uh, so, can I use uh, Nendran banana instead of uh, Elaki and Robusta? Uh, Nendran will give you a display. Um, Nendran is usually not that soft type, right? It is a bit uh, dense or hard. So, you could still use, maybe you can, uh, if it is too ripe, you could use, but not the uh, medium ripe ones. Because you will not get the moisture uh, for the cake. Because we are not uh, adding any additional milk or something here. So Got we it. would need that, yeah. Okay. So uh, may I know which mode of mode you have used in your uh, mic oven? Um, oh. Mine is the uh, multi-level oven. There is no mode. It's a fan mode that I have used. So if at all, generally, um, if we are using the regular borosil or morphe Richards, you would... Uh, Keep your both rods on. Yeah, anytime like you bake a cake, right? So that's the same procedure you follow. So you mean like the top, the heat from top and bottom? Yes, both would require. And the fan is there, that would also be better. Okay, so I'm the fan should be on and the minutes. top. And, oh, sorry. So the I, fan should be on and the top and bottom, also the heat should be coming. Yes, yes. So it okay. is easy to bake. And for people who don't have an oven, uh, so the one thing that you could do is like, if you have a, a kadai that you are not long, no longer use, or if you have a cooker that you no longer use, you would need a very thick bottom vessel. So that's the ideal thing. So you can put it on your stove top. I mean, your cooktop on a gas cooktop. And you could, you could have any vessel, not necessarily a baking tin, any uh, any uh, vessel from your kitchen, you could use, you know, butter or oil in your uh, uh, vessel and then pour the batter and keep it the same thing. Allow it to preheat for some time. It can either uh, line it with salt or uh, sand. The, um, the reverse sand you could line it with. And then you could place this pan inside that. Maybe heat it empty uh, for about uh, 10 minutes so that's the ideal time for any uh, preheating option that happens so and then you would uh, you could place it over there 
and you see you can keep a time of 30 minutes maybe 20 to 25 minutes and keep your flame initially keep your flame at a high until it is getting preheated uh, until your kadai or your cooker is getting heated up once that is done you could mm -hmm. you know lower the flame keep the flame at medium um, so that you your cake will not burn it will turn out good so for people who don't have oven so this what you but How about a microwave oven where it has got a convection mode? You can still make it? Yes, yes. You could use your convection mode. So um, you could go to the convention option and you could preheat to 180 and you could directly bake on the middle track. Uh, instead of banana, can we use dates? Dates? Um, so uh, dates cake is slightly different. So I mean, you could uh, you could try out Okay, try out, you. yeah, yeah. Now, what oh, about the shelf life of this cake? Okay, How... the, since this has banana, I mean, like, uh, two days it can, two to three days it can be out in the room temperature. If you'd like to store it for a longer time, you could uh, freeze your cake or um, store it in the refrigerator in an airtight container because most of uh, the reason why is airtight is like we would all keep our curries or um, chutneys, so there will be so many other dishes in the fridge as well. So those flavors might impact the flavor of the cake be because cake absorbs the flavor that is on the surrounding. So put it in an airtight container or um, you could wrap it, use a wax paper to wrap, wrap it or something like that or put it in a box and then you can store it. But IDD, like uh, even if you store it in the refrigerator, within a week you need to consume because it has bananas. Yeah. So, any more questions or, or can we move on to the next one? So, no need to apply any uh, butter or anything on the sides, on the mold? Um, yeah, you you can. I I said no, I have already applied and I've kept and I'm just, uh, and ideally it's, it's for your baking paper to stick. So, on the sides you need not to put, it will come out of the pan clear, clean on. Okay, thank you. Okay, so any other questions anybody has? Will we get a recording of this? I think that um, <laughs> Radhika Ma'am should answer. How long does it normally take a joy for the cake to be? Um, um, it's 30 to 35 minutes. So you could start um, checking at 30 minutes. Mostly by 30 minutes it should be done. If at all, um, because some oven might take longer because not every oven is of the same caliber. So you could check after 30 minutes and check whether it is done or not. And then maybe you can keep for another 5 minutes and check whether it is done. Okay, so if you could see, like uh, I've filled the pan, like three by four now, it is already risen up um, to the top and this 10 minutes is over. So I'll still mm -hmm. let like, 20 minutes left for the cake to be done. Okay, so um, uh, so the next one, would you all want me to show the demo or just if I explain the recipe, is that fine? And I could answer more questions. Okay, so um, Radhika, Ma'am, can I ask you to can you share the PPT for the next recipe? Okay, so this is um this is more like a butter cookie. I think uh, we would all have uh, it's kind of a, a butter cookie recipe, but here we will be using sambar wheat. 
so that's the MOV 70 grams and we'll be also using ragi flour that is 70 grams and we will be using jaggery um, 55 grams and we'll be using uh, butter unsalted butter 90 grams so just four simple ingredients and uh, if at all you want it um, okay the samba wheat flour is mr wheat that's in english it's mr wheat okay so uh, only these four uh, basic ingredients we have to or uh, there is not much of a process it's much simpler than what we did for the cake you just bring all your uh, butter your flours and all this together that's it and you bring it to a dough yeah okay so um we'll just quickly um uh, do the demo so you would need any cookie cutter um in the shape so if you want to get the same shape as in the picture um a round would be ideal okay so uh, so here are the ingredients that i Um, yeah, so hope this is visible for you. So this is the ragi flour. So this is the wheat flour, the emory flour, and it's, um, jaggery. And here I have some unsalted butter. Okay, so um, for this recipe, make sure um, your butter is soft to touch. So how to check the softness is like you touch your butter and it gets an impression. Okay, so when you get the um, impression, okay, that means it is soft and it should not be uh, too soft. So this is ideal. So um, you could also work on a surface for this because um, okay, let's get the water. Okay, so um, I'll just I'll just add um the ingredients. So I'll just add jaggery to this. Okay, so the rest all the ingredients I'm going to sift it. So the wheat, okay, and then the ragi, both together. So, So this is done. So we we will not be using any fancy equipment uh, here also. Okay. So we'll be just using your hands to rub the butter along with our flour. Okay. You could also use two of your hands. We are just rubbing the butter along with the flour. Okay. I'm just going to put it on the mat over here. So that would be much easier for me to work with. So we are not going to add any uh, milk or water to this. Uh, just this alone. So you could already see that this dip is coming together. So uh, until all the flour is completely uh, mixed with the butter, you can just bring this all together. Okay, so it forms a ball like this. Okay, so now this is pretty much good. So I'm making sure I have no, no, no more flours left. So hope that all is together. So now I'm going to just... Um, So make sure your thickness is like a uh, half of one. Just uh, pat this here. Okay. 
you could also use a rolling pin now just to you know i'm just going to spread it out a little so the edges i'm going to see So I would need a cookie cutter. I'm using a medium round cookie cutter. Okay. I'm going to cut the cookies and I'm going to roll it again. Okay. So you could uh, use the back of your spoon or you could use a uh, a spatula to lift it lift this up okay so that's the thickness that I have given for the cookie so i'll just place this on to the onto a baking tray lined with a parchment paper or a non-stick mat So the remaining thing, again, you can bring it together, do the same process. So if you could see, we haven't added um, any milk or any water, just the butter has given it the enough moisture to you know, bring the dough together. another three more so i have just half the recipe uh, today so that's why i'm getting very less cookies i did not do the whole thing that i've showed on the screen so that's the last one yeah so this is done okay so um you could have seen this is a very uh quick to do recipe um, just few ingredients and that comes quickly. So I'll just put this all on a tray. Same thing, you need to, you know, preheat your oven to 180. And so since already my oven is at 180, I'll just directly place it like this. So I have a baking tray here. I'm using a non-stick mat, so on top of that, I'm placing. Okay, so I'm placing the cookies here. I'm baking it for twelve minutes because there is twelve minutes left for the cake to done. So, so I'll bake simultaneously. So just leave a bit space between the cookies and. Just 10 minutes. Um, 
Uh, you're not audible suddenly. No, no, I, I guess you should adjust your mic. Mic a bit, yeah. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Yeah, so hope this was an uh, easy recipe. Okay, so now over to the questions. Uh, can we use uh, vegan butter? Yes, you could use. So why it's uh, ragi and uh, wheat together half and half? Why can we use ragi fully? You could use ragi fully, but uh, you know ragi is gluten free, and uh, you have to additionally add some starch to hold the ragi together, or you would need to add eggs to hold the ragi together. Uh, some of the binding ingredients that you would need to add. Um, so, so for that binding ingredient, we have used uh, wheat over here. So, can we increase or decrease the thickness of the cookie yes, and uh, timing timing of the cooking? Uh, yeah, you could decrease the thickness of the cookie and also the size of the cookie. So, depending on that, you could start from 10 minutes. For 180, uh, you could... Uh, Bake for around 10 minutes. And maybe check. Only the edges need to turn slightly um, golden. Um, so when you see the cookie, it would look soft. But once it cools down on the pan, um, it would uh, be crisp. And I think I have some cookie. I'll just show you. So you could see uh, this snaps well. So you could store it in an attic container for the, um, almost like uh, three weeks, it would stay good. So nothing will happen. Maybe once you could make and we keep it, it will stay good for almost like three weeks. Any other questions? So will you, so will you uh, powder the jaggery? Or uh, you will add it? Uh, no, I just uh, directly used it. I, I just directly used it like this. It's it's already, uh, there are a few chunks, but I did not powder it. I just directly added it. Uh, because like we are pressing it along with the butter, so it gets powdered in that way. But if you are feeling a bit concerned, you could powder it. So the What's butter the baking time? In the only in the consistent which you have shown. It should not be very soft. No, no, it should not be very soft. Yeah. Why it's so? The why it should not be very soft. Um, why? Um, can you come again because somebody else is yeah. speaking, so I could. Yeah. What's the baking time? Yeah, the baking time is um one eighty degree for uh, uh ten to twelve. So I have asked like uh, why we should not make the butter so soft. Um, you want it to be a bit firm, right? Um, so this is a butter cookie. So butter cookie needs to be maintained at a certain temperature uh, to give you that crunchiness and that, uh, you know, uh, the classic uh, butter cookie version. When you bite into it, you get that mouth feel. So for that, you need the cookie to be not to be too soft or not to be too hard. So it needs to be at the right thing. So in the mode also the same mode which we have used for the cake, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Somebody else was asking something. I'm sorry. I missed it. And sorry, I'm not reading the chats because I'm very far from my uh, computer. <laughs> so if you could come unmute and ask, that would be highly beneficial. Uh, hello. Uh, can we add uh, nuts or a chocolate chip to the cookie? <laughs> um, you could add, but make it into a uh, very tiny, tiny pieces. Okay, okay. Yeah, thank you. 
the can you use the normal sugar yes you could use we can use but any it's not the, uh, it you you have to check on the measurements because jaggery uh, level of sweetness is different normal sugar's level of sweetness is different so there will be a slight difference um, you need to check on that can we use any millet any other millets other than uh, ragi yes you could use jowar you could use uh, um pearl millet sorghum also sorghum and jowar are all similar you could use little millet flour or you could oh, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, any millets, any millets you could use in this recipe. You can replace with any type of millets here. You could, so here we have uh, used 50% millets and 50% wheat. If at all needed, you could also go for like 80% millet and 20% wheat. That also you could do, but uh, the, it might break. But um, still, uh, you could go ahead. Or if you could add additionally an egg or something, it would stay together. Yeah. So whenever you bake with gluten free, um, you know you need to have additional starch. Yes. Um, I had some other question. Please go ahead. Um. Uh. Regarding the wheat flour, uh, can I use any wheat flour? Uh, normal samba wheat or uh, normal. Uh, yes. Uh, you could use Agamberi wheat or any other wheat. Yeah. You could use you could use any wheat. Uh, but the absorption, so if at all you are using different types of wheat, the absorption rate of water uh, differs to each type of wheat. So maybe you could do a small batch for the first time and check uh, how the consistency turns out to be. And then maybe you could decide on factor like how this consistency is turning out because every wheat is different. Uh, can we also add the ginger? Yes, ginger powder gives a very good flavor when you add with the uh, millet. Yes, because we haven't added uh, any um, additional uh, essence or extracts in our recipes. For both the recipes, we have just added spices for the cake that is cinnamon powder. So for this cookie, ragi goes well with ginger. You could surely use that. Any other questions? So I've just left uh, two more minutes left for the cake uh, to be done. So I will show you how the cake turns out. And a few of you have also had a doubt whether you're not lying the size of the pan will it stick. So I'll just show you um, it. So ideally, when your cake is well done, it should leave the sides of the pan. So that's one way to figure out whether your cakes are done or not. Okay, I'll just uh, two more minutes. So any more questions, if you have, can write uh, You mentioned if the cake is uh, done, uh, how do you check that? So either you uh, use a toothpick Pick, uh. to insert or a knife to insert inside and if it comes out clean it is done so that's one way of doing the other way of doing is like you do the spring test that is like you touch on top of the cake and if the cake springs back you just press the cake and if the cake springs back and you know that it is done and the other way is like on the sides of the pan the cake would shrink uh, shrink away from the sides so that is also how you know that the cake is almost done. And I'll oh, show wow. you another, yeah, another, another minute. I'll show you how that is, yeah, how to check it. Any other questions? In cake, shall we use ragi flour instead of cholam flour? Uh, in the cake, no. Uh, we why I asked uh, why I have used uh, cholam flour uh, in the cake is 
uh, to give the softness because emma wheat is a bit um, on the harder side so i have uh, you know to balance that out i have to use the sorghum flour so if at all you're going to use ragi so that purpose is not going to be solved but uh, replacing uh, wheat a little bit of wheat flour you could use ragi flour okay so the cake is done just take it out of the oven and i'll show you So if you could see, uh, it has left the sides of the pan. It is no longer sticking to the sides of the pan. So this is what I meant by that. And this is the spring test. I, I push this and it springs back. Okay. So this is done. So I'm using a toothpick or a skewer. So here is a skewer. Okay. I just poke it inside and... It should come out clean if, if there are few crumbs sticking to your so if you could see there are like one or two crumbs sticking to it uh since it is a banana cake some the bananas might stick to that so ideally we will think that it is not done but it is done so if you want you could place for another two minutes in that case two to three minutes or uh, this is done so allow it to cool in the same pan itself okay. for another okay. uh five minutes because it will still be cooking and place it on a cooling rack so this is a cooling rack which you can see so place it on that and allow it to cool completely once it is cooled um you can just run a knife on the edges and then the cake would release from the pan and then you could unmold the pan unmold the cake okay so i just put it for another two minutes i want um uh, this is almost done it came back very nicely and but uh, the bananas has good amount of moisture. I'll also check the cookies. Ten minutes is done. If needed, I'll just put the cookies for another two minutes. So the cookies sides have not turned golden brown. So I'm just going to put the cookies for another two minutes. <laughs> okay so the cake is here mm -hmm. so any doubts on the cake uh you could uh, on the sides can we use parchment paper um, yes, you could use, but uh, ideally it is not necessary. Uh... Uh, so we have used this peanut butter, right? Yes. Uh, so will it not make the cake denser? Like already the samba wheat is a little bit denser than the usual wheat, right? What is the importance of using the peanut butter instead of normal butter? So, uh, to give a more healthier twist to the cake. So, that's oh. the reason I've used peanut butter. So, nothing else. You could use regular butter here as well, or you could use oil also here. Since uh, this is a very healthy baking workshop, I, uh, but anyway, for the other recipe, we have used um, uh, white butter. So, uh, just to you know, give additional options, like, like how healthy we can turn our cakes to be. Yeah. So, that's the idea behind it, using peanut butter here. You could always replace it with oil or regular butter. Okay, but in that case, we need to add essence, right? Um. Uh, so the flavor comes from cinnamon here. Okay. Cinnamon okay. and peanut. Um, but the peanut would be minus, but the cinnamon would be the highlight then. Because we oh. also have added uh, cinnamon here. Okay, thank you. Uh, can we also add vanilla to the cake or uh, cookies? Yes, if you want the flavor uh, to be prominent for vanilla. But so if at all you want to go for, uh, you can go for extracts rather than essence. So you would know the difference between an extract and an essence. Okay, so the cookies are also done.
the total it has taken uh, 12 minutes to be okay so it has taken Okay. okay, so if at all I'm going to touch the cookie now, it would be very soft. Okay. Um, so once it cools in the pan for another two to three minutes, um, it would be uh, it will turn into crisp. Okay, only the edges have slightly turned down. Uh, we don't want uh, the cookie to harden up too much. Okay. So that's the ideal thing for the butter. And and moreover, I've done a very thick cookie. So if you want a thinner version, maybe 10 minutes would be sufficient for that. Uh, similar to the cake, you can also, can you, we can also use the peanut butter in the cookie. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, as earlier the question came, right? So peanut butter gives you a little bit of tensor. And yes, you could use. So it's kind of a nut butter you could use. But you can do trials, work on a small bit of recipe and then try. Okay, so if there are, yes, this year wants to. Ask a question. Yeah. Okay. So if there are uh, no longer any more questions, I hope uh, this session was uh, very useful for you and uh, very much beneficial. Definitely. Is the recording yeah. available? Uh, we will share it, uh, ma'am. We will share okay. it. Okay. So. Uh, so if there are uh, no more questions, then I think, uh, thank you, Joy. It was a wonderful session, uh, you know, uh, to see that we could replace uh, uh, artificial colors, artificial flavorings, you know, even milk, uh, white butter, oil. You've used none of these for this uh, cake. And, uh, you know, uh, you use peanut butter, you use the cinnamon powder for the flavor. Uh, the flour instead of maida, you used um, you know wheat flour, healthy alternatives. So you know uh, this is really nice, really nice and interesting. So you know we'll all try at home. I hope every one of us will try at home, and then uh, you know we can enjoy guilt-free uh, cakes, right? So thank you so much for this amazing session. Your instructions were very clear. That's why we uh, have, uh, you know, uh, we don't have any more questions here. So thank you so much. Uh, yeah. So any uh, any other uh, questions or do you all want any more sessions of uh, baking uh, in future? Do let me know. Sure. Okay. You, you all can give us the suggestions. And uh, so uh, Joy actually uh, teaches baking. She does workshops. And I will share her number with you all uh, on the WhatsApp chat. So, like I said, uh, she is based uh, out of Bangalore. And uh, you can join her workshops. You could join her workshops if you are in Bangalore. Oh, oh, she does online workshops, right, Joy? Yes, yes. I have an upcoming online workshop for the millet and whole wheat session in September. Okay, great. So, you all can contact her if you want. And, uh, you know, uh, people who are, who stay in Bangalore, you all can order cakes from her. Organic bakery is what uh, she runs. So, you know, and uh, yeah, so you can make use of that. And uh, as for the uh, ingredients uh, she used, uh, I think uh, the, uh, the wheat flour, the jaggery, the walnuts were from Heritage Essentials. Am I right, uh, Joy? Yes. Yes. Everything except the peanut butter, all of them Heritage Essentials. Right, right. Thank you. So you all can find uh, these ingredients in our uh, website. Um, so like I said earlier, we source these organic ingredients from farmers across, uh, uh, you know, across Tamil Nadu and some from other states as well. For example, the nuts come from Kashmir. And um, so we uh, choose the farmers from other places and we get the genuine produce, natural, uh, naturally grown produce. So you all can order at heritageessentials.in and that's our contact number. 
so Joy's number is there. Uh, you can, you know, take note of it. So we'll, uh, you know, come back to you with more such recipes on baking. Uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, you could give us suggestions on what recipes you'd like to see. Probably, you know, Joy can uh, do another session for us in uh, future. Sure. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Geeta ma'am, I'll get in touch with you, Geeta ma'am. So thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Uh, thank you so much. And, um, you know, uh, you can contact us in the given numbers uh, and uh, we'll meet on another session in future. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. Thank you, Joy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.